presentation of the work of the European Centre for Modern Languages. Uh, this is really an invitation for you to explore the work of the Centre and uh, my intention is really to show you the, uh, the work and the resources available. Let's look at the agenda of this presentation. I start with the Council of Europe. The ECML is part of the Council of Europe and uh, therefore this is our starting point. We we'll look briefly at some examples in language policy of the Council of Europe and then we travel to Graz uh, and look at the role of the ECML in the area of language education. I'll briefly uh, highlight uh, the ECML program 2020-2023 and we we'll look at the development of projects, resources, and then uh, the role of training and consultancy in, uh, in the ECML program. We we'll look at some examples of ECML resources for you to further explore. And we uh, come back to policy, to language policy at the end, and an invitation uh, to all of you, please stay connected. Now, first of all, let's travel to Strasbourg. Strasbourg in France, uh, with the oldest uh, intergovernmental organization, uh, intergovernmental bringing together 46 member states. Please do not confuse the Council of Europe with the European Union or the European Council, which is uh, an organization of the European Union. The Council of Europe was founded right after the Second World War, 1949, and it works on the promotion of human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. Why, you might ask yourself, is then the Council of Europe working on language education? Now, let's look at a simple question. What kind of society will our children live in tomorrow? Well, we don't know, to be honest, but we know that the kind of education we are providing today is setting the stage for the future of our children. And clearly language, language learning and language education plays a vital role in that education. Therefore, the Council of Europe has been working on language education for more than uh, 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 for a few decades. So let's look at examples of language policy work. Uh, you can see the slogan, education for democracy, and we can uh, easily extend language education for democracy. I'll give you three examples of uh, language policy work. The first one, I'm sure you're familiar with that. That's the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. Um, developed and published in 2001 and with a more recent, most recent uh, edition, the Companion Volume, which highlights the role of the language learner as a social agent in societies. Also, you find an elaboration on uh, the concept of mediation in language teaching and learning. You'll find descriptors for young learners um, and for sign languages, for example. Now, the CFR is clearly rooted in foreign language learning, but the development has moved on, and the second resource I would like to present to you is this platform of resources for plurilingual and intercultural education. Starting from the learner, the focus is on the learner and the languages the learner brings with him or herself into the school. And as you can see, this is a rather complex uh, setting. It's not only about foreign languages. The language of schooling is uh, a major point of reference. Language of schooling with Slovenian in Slovene, French in France, or Polish in Poland. The language uh, of instruction. But the learner may also bring with him or herself regional languages, minority languages, migration languages. So this is a very, very complex setting. And uh, this setting may not always be taken into account in teaching, in textbooks, and in the curriculum. So you find on this platform resources to be used, or which you can use in this context. But I'd like to highlight a third resource, this guide for the development and implementation of curricula to promote plurilingual and intercultural um, education. 
In this guide, you find a number of very, very practical examples for promoting whole school approaches so that really everybody involved in this educational, in this complex educational setting can benefit from uh, better language learning and teaching. But let's now travel from France to Austria to, Gra to Graz. Uh, what is the role of the ECML? We have all these wonderful tools developed in Strasbourg. Uh, why do we need um, the ECML? You can see here, and please apologize, my not very skillful graphical uh, addition to this slide, that there is a gap between professional talk and classroom teaching. And the ECML is there to overcome this gap, to make sure that policies and recommendations really feed into uh, teaching and learning in classrooms. So bridging policy, research, teacher education and classroom practice is a major uh, task for the ECML. Now this is becoming very complex because of course we are looking at European policy and national policy but we also uh, look at examples from curricula. We promote quality in teacher education with the aim of feeding into developments in classroom practice. Of course, research is being taken into account. And if you consider that these professionals really represent all the ECML member states, you can imagine that the discussions carried out in Graz are really very active and uh, um, represent the wider European uh, initiative and ambition to improve language education. But which topics are we really talking about? Uh, and I'd like to use this opportunity to present the current uh, program of the ECML to you. The program is entitled Inspiring Innovation in Language Education, Changing Contexts, Evolving Competences. Now, to be honest, when we conceived this program and the title in 2019, we really had no idea how pertinent changing contexts, and I'm talking about political contexts and also uh, the pandemic health contexts uh, in Europe would become, and how important therefore it is to work on competences, evolving competences, to make sure that teachers today uh, are prepared to uh, meet the challenges in order to support language learning in Europe. Now this is the structure of the programme. We have a development strand with project projects carried out uh, throughout four years. Then we have what we call a mediation strand. This is an area where we offer training and support, where we offer uh, a larger audience to become involved, for example, in webinars or con con uh, conferences. And we'll look at that second part in just a second, but I would like to present to you the projects included in this program. Um, you can see right away the CFR is there, the companion volume, the new uh, concepts of the companion volume, a uh, dedicated uh, project working on mediation. Uh, you can see that language, no, that teacher education is a topic throughout all projects. Uh, for example, teacher competences for using pluralistic approaches, uh, language-sensitive teacher education. We are also promoting uh, the learning of home languages of migrant children. Transversal competences, definitely a topic uh, that is high on the agenda in, in uh, our member states. Using clear content and language integrated learning in languages other than English, across different educational steps. Uh, a project on cross-border vocational learning, early language learning, definitely an area where we want to promote quality language education and digital citizenship. Now, I would like to highlight this process of development, uh, starting from ECML projects becoming uh, uh, publishing resources and leading into this uh, format of training and consultancy. Now these are pictures of all our ECML experts working in, uh, in projects. So this is uh, an example of our ECML expert collaboration. We also collaborate uh, in the context of the Professional Network Forum with major European and international organizations 
on uh, language education. Now, in, in, this, in these discussions, we uh, develop materials and resources, which are then being piloted and reviewed with a larger audience, with representatives from all our member states. And the discussion and the feedback feeds back into uh, the finalization of publications. So once the resources are being published, uh, we promote the dissemination of our resources through our network of contact points in our member states. On our website, for example, you can find a search engine where you can uh, um, look for specific resources in the area uh, of in, in thematic areas. But a very uh, important step following this larger scale uh, uh, wide uh, dissemination process is a format which we call training and consultancy. And in this training and consultancy, we are, uh, we are collaborating with our project teams who kindly offer their time and their uh, competence and respond to direct requests from our member states to support developments in their country. So on this occasion, expert teams travel to countries, to our member states, and offer a training uh, workshop um, for an audience, for a local audience, or for, for a bigger audience in the context of conferences. Now this photo was taken in, you recognize the language? That's Armenian. So that was taken in Armenia, and uh, clearly you can see that um, uh, it is quite a big audience for the promotion of a specific resource. Uh, and I would just like to give a few examples. Actually, you can see here all the, uh, the resources and the topics we are offering in this context of training and consultancy. I have selected two, uh, two examples of feedback um, that uh, we received as a result of, uh, of training in, in the member state. The first one says, the event provided tangible examples from other countries which can be implemented in our country. And I think this clearly shows the value of European cooperation. The second one, the combination of solid academic evidence along with practical tools was particularly useful. So this is uh, maybe representing what you can expect from training and consultancy in your context. I would also like to show one outstanding a uh, unique example of what uh, has been provided on one occasion, also from our media, I wanted to, to highlight. It's a sweet example. This was served in the coffee break in, uh, in one of the training and consultancy um, uh, sessions. But please do not expect that to come with your training. Now, uh, just to highlight again the um, ECML website, these are the thematic areas which are there right spot on. When you click on the ECML website, you can go and choose a, a section uh, which is um, of your, a section of your interest and you will find the resources right there. All the resources are free uh, and open uh, for everybody. A dedicated uh, very uh, rich website uh, is, is uh, available uh, for the promotion of the European Day of Languages. Please uh, explore this website. There's a wealth of very, very interesting uh, materials, um, games. I've uh, included here the language fun section with really nice uh, activities you can easily integrate in classroom teaching. The aim is to promote language learning, to make sure that uh, language learning gets visibility, not only in the classroom, but beyond at school level, and even outside schools, involving parents, involving um, other communities uh, to promote language learning. Uh, we've set up a dedicated website for uh, a very challenging situation at the moment across Europe and beyond. Uh, this is a website to support the linguistic integration of refugees from the UK, Ukraine. Uh, you will find materials for teachers to cope with a situation where there are newcomers in classes and uh, where they need to integrate, to linguistically integrate their learners in the classroom. 
Now, uh, another uh, tool that has been added to our website only recently. If you're interested in terminology across languages, this is definitely a website I can recommend. A multilingual glossary of key terms in language education. I would like to come back to policy, language policy for inspiring practice. In February 2022, a recommendation was published, a recommendation adopted by the Council of Europe's Committee, Committee of Ministers on the importance of plurilingual and intercultural education for democratic culture. And I would just like to highlight one aspect. It's a very complex document, which is definitely worth uh, reading and uh, reflecting upon. One aspect that really uh, represents the work of the ECML uh, in, a, in a very clear way, I think, it's important to support collaboration between educational and cultural institutions, civil society and businesses to promote plurilingual and intercultural learning for democratic culture, for a democratic future in Europe. So I'm coming uh, to an end. I'm coming back to my question, uh, the question I put to you initially, what kind of society will our children live in tomorrow? Definitely, we as language professionals, we have a key in our hands and we have a responsibility to look after quality in language education. The ECML can be a partner in this. Uh, I hope uh, I uh, succeeded in showing that uh, the ECML is not only a unique institution in Europe promoting language education, but it's also relevant for developments that, and challenges that you are facing in your context. So please stay connected. Uh, use our social media, our website. Uh, we are offering a language gazette, uh, a regular uh, electronic newsletter, uh, stay connected and benefit from this European collaboration. I wish you every success for putting into practice your uh, inspiring ideas uh, and the ambition you have for your students and children. Thank you. Thank you.